Okay, back to the money shot here. Um, let's just have a little discussion on what would the odds have been if you'd have tried to do this uh, with any other scope. I'll tell you right now, this particular capture uh, could cannot be reproduced with any other automotive scope currently on the market. Uh, this Pico scope is, is just miles ahead of anything else out there right now and its ability to collect enormous amounts of information over long periods of time uh, with robust sample rates. And that's what it took uh, to get this capture over this long period of time and see this complete trend like this. What would have happened if we would have deployed another very, very capable scope? In fact, I would consider uh, the Snap-on Modus probably to be the uh, most capable handheld scope uh, on the market today for automotive use. And uh, it has a very, uh, very, uh, very good power uh, to signal ratio, and you're able to do a lot of things with it. It's, but, of course, it doesn't compare at all to the Pico. And here, let me just illustrate what would have happened if you tried to use a modus on this scenario uh, to maintain this kind of sample rate. First of all, let's see how we're doing here on sample rate with the Pico scope 4423 model. Uh, we've got a sample every 30 millionths of a second. Our sample rate is 333 kilosamples a second, and we've captured over 16 million samples uh, on this screen. So let's just look at a performance chart for MODIS here and see, uh, of course, the Varus is going to be the same performance, uh, which is the newer uh, PC-based uh, design. So the closest sample rate to 33 kilohertz is going to be 25 kilohertz right here. Sample rate, 25 kilohertz. You would be setting your screen time on the modus to 20 milliseconds on your sweep rate. And you would collect 262 screens for 5.2 seconds. And of course, you wouldn't be able to see the whole capture when the scope's running because that's the design of the modus is such that you have to stop the scope and zoom out to see what you've captured. You can't run it at any zoom level. So we would be able to capture 5.2 seconds. Let's just see what that looks like. Okay, so we've zoomed in on the Pico capture and we framed off with the rulers uh, very close to 5 seconds. Actually, it's 5.2 seconds, so let's just give it a little more. Very close. Okay, so we framed off the amount of time you'd be able to capture uh, on a modus with this sample rate, or close to this sample rate. Actually, it's less, but close enough, 25 uh, kilohertz, 33. Uh, but in any case, it would work just fine and you'd be able to capture five seconds of this compression waveform. Let's zoom out and just see how much time that represents in relationship to the entire capture. As you can see, we've captured an enormous amount more, more data. Uh, this PicoScope is actually over 130 times more powerful uh, than a MODIS, and this is a demonstration of what you can do with that kind of power. As you can see, you know, What's framed between these rulers at 5.2 seconds is the maximum amount of capture time you'd have on a modus at this sample rate. How are you going to see this trend? No matter where you put these bars on this capture, how are you going to see this trend? You're not. It's just not going to happen. So this would have been a lot more challenging uh, with that scope, even though it's probably the best handheld scope you can get your hands on, everything else would be, you'd be even less likely to see something like this. So I thought this was a really good demonstration of what you can do uh, with a Pico scope in finding uh, very difficult problems and simple ones too. Uh, just a lot more information on the screen at one time makes your job a lot easier and allows you to observe things that you would no normally not be able to see. It's pretty obvious that this kind of equipment doesn't cost money, it makes money. So, it's a no-brainer to get a PicoScope. It's just a no-brainer. 
uh, every every auto every uh, automotive technician that does any of this kind of work should absolutely have one. So the only remaining question really is is where to get it, and of course uh, Auto Nerds uh, is the automotive picoscope authority in North America. We have customers all over the world, and there's a very good reason for that. Uh, we provide the uh, we, the best automotive uh, picoscope uh, support and training available, and it's all included. Uh, with every full PicoScope kit uh, purchased from us. Basically, what it amounts to is just very simple. We provide you with absolutely everything you need to reach whatever level of expertise you desire with this equipment. The only ingredient you have to add is your uh, time and willingness to study and practice. If you're willing to do that, we will provide you with all the training materials you need to be able to operate this, this piece of equipment. It's not that hard, but there's a lot of stuff to it to understand how it all functions and to be able to be comfortable with it uh, and use it in the field effectively on automotive diagnostics. And we have uh, created PicoScope experts uh, everywhere. Probably one of the best validations we've had of our uh, uh, training program is the fact that other vendors uh, recruit uh, technicians who have been through our program and have been our customers and have enjoyed the benefits of our support and training. So just uh, do your homework. Um, makes a lot of sense to uh, go to the place where the PicoScope experts come from and uh, learn from that community. Uh, we have a mass community uh, uh, interacting on our forums, uh, sharing a lot of really uh, interesting information and case studies, including things like this. Uh, and so thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, very interesting case study on the Wrangler from Hell.